Hi, my name is Richard Backus, and I live in New Boston. Whatever our differences, we all agree on doing together certain things to keep our state strong. Things that families and towns can't do on their own. Things like roads and bridges, police and fire departments, schools and colleges, laws and courts. Every two years, we elect some of our friends and neighbors to go to Concord and represent us, to do what needs to be done. Our state budget is the agreement we reach about what things are most important and how to pay for them. I don't believe you can have a meaningful kind of civilization without gathering together and sharing resources. In our, in our society, that's money. Money pays for services and for goods. We pool our money to make for the greater good. Of course, no one wants more taxes, but without some sort of revenue, we don't get the services we want. And that we need to talk about those services. We need to talk about, I mean, we, we care, we value our schools. We value having roads to drive on. We, we value having our roads plowed. We value the firemen and the police. Every year we make sure we're getting what we paid for. We make sure we're getting the most bang for our buck. If something's not working anymore, it gets fixed. If something needs trimming, it gets trimmed. When it comes to where our tax dollars go, we look hard at everything every year. But our tax system, where those tax dollars come from, hasn't been looked at seriously in decades. <laughs> no wonder it doesn't work anymore. The bottom line is it doesn't raise enough money to support the programs we've already decided together that we need. In this system, revenues can't grow at the same rate as the economy. It's guaranteed that our income will always fall short of our expenditures. Just for the programs we already have. Just for the things we've already agreed are important. We scrutinize our spending every year. It's time to take a fresh look at our revenues. One of the um, great uh, concepts uh, of the early republic uh, that you read about again and again in the newspapers and in and, and, and sermons and in speeches that people gave uh, is the idea of civic virtue. Because it was uh, understood by everybody that there had to be some kind of way of providing the few things that needed to be provided for uh, the public good. In colonial times, our system worked well. Most people were farmers and lived off the land. Property was a good measure of wealth and income. So relying on the property tax for most of the state's revenue made sense. But not anymore. Now most property is a home. It's often less a measure of what we own than of what we owe the bank. It's not a good measure of what each of us can afford to contribute to running our state. But we still rely on the property tax for over half of our revenue, more than any other state. And because we lean so heavily on the property tax, our rates are way too high, the third highest in the nation. You heard that right, third highest in the nation. And it still doesn't raise enough money to pay for what we agree we need to keep our state moving forward. Property taxes just keep going up. And that's just to stay even without adding any new programs. I do know that we need another revenue source other than property tax. Property tax is, in my view, regressive. Uh, it has nothing to do with your ability to pay. To pay. We have to face the issues. We have to have fair taxation in order to have our same low rate, fair, small government. You know, we live in New Hampshire. It's live free or die. And certainly, I think a lot of people live free at the expense of other people not being able to live free. But the problem is every time you mention any tax or revenue generating mechanism, some group of people is all, all automatically mad or unhappy. Some people still insist on the so-called pledge. But let's face it, it's just a pledge to keep raising property taxes and to ignore the ingenuity of the people of New Hampshire to find better solutions, more modern solutions. Sticking with the old is holding us back. It's hurting our state 
and our families too. It's it's Elizabeth's future. It's you know she's gonna you know I want her to be able to have good schools to to go to and um, and be able to enjoy the natural resources. What happens when we don't fix it is why I for one still feel so strongly about this. We just closed a ward at the state hospital and we closed our unit for children and moved children into the adult hospital. I think that's unconscionable. You're, you're stuck because you can't just let your infrastructure fail and put your children's safety and educational quality at risk. In the Granite State, we don't back away from a challenge. We face the facts. Resourcefulness is the New Hampshire way. And so, uh, does it not follow that, uh, that uh, there should, we should be studying all of our tax structure, all of the options that are presented, and be able to objectively analyze them on accurate data. We can take a balanced approach to budget reform that ensures all our programs are up to date and efficient and paid for. And we can lower property taxes too. There's an old expression that a, a fool, only a fool is going to keep doing what they're doing and expect a different result. The fact is we've been doing this for a long time and it's still not working and we need to do something to change it. The first step is to take a fresh look at our revenue system. We can put all the options on the table. We can face the facts. We can have the debate. We can find a solution that will work for everyone. We can build a modern budget system that will keep New Hampshire moving in the 21st century and maintain the foundations of our prosperity for generations to come. Let's get to work, New Hampshire. Hi, I'm Laurel Redden. I'm the president of the Granite State Fair Tax Coalition. We need your help. This is the call to action. Right now, there are 70,000 individuals across the state of New Hampshire working together to try to solve this problem. We need your help. And I know you're thinking, what can one person do? Well, one person can tell a neighbor about the Fair Tax Coalition and the work we're trying to do. You can help us spread that word. One person can write a letter to the editor and inform an entire community of this issue. One person can blog online or go to our Facebook page and join others there who share our concern and want to do this same work. We appreciate your time. We hope you'll join us. Go to our website, contribute, help us do this important work. Thanks a lot.